Good morning, everyone. Am I audible? Yes, ma'am. Okay, I hope my screen is also visible to you. Okay. Okay, so um last class we have uh discussed about the chemical characteristics of uh, sewage also the physical characteristics we have completed and about the chemical characteristics we have uh, discussed about the uh, what are the chemical characteristics those are your total solids uh, suspended solids and separable solids so those we have already discussed in our last class then coming to our uh, next uh, characteristic of your sewage that is your pH value. Okay, so pH value uh, it is uh, same as your uh, like that for your uh, raw water characteristics. So pH uh, value it generally gives you uh, the whether the uh, sewage is acidic or whether it is uh, alkal alkalinity. It has alkalinity or it is acidic. Okay. So, uh, what is the, if uh, suppose the pH value is uh, less than 7, then you can say that the sewage is acidic and if the pH value is more than 7, then you can say that the sewage is basic or alkaline. So, uh, like uh, it is, uh, if uh, you have to, the, I mean, you have to give the definition of pH, then you can say that it is the negative uh, logarithm of uh, hydrogen ion concentration that is present in your sewage okay so uh, what is the expression expression is uh, it is ph is equal to minus log of h plus minus log of h plus means negative uh, log of hydrogen ion concentration or also you can write as one by log of h plus ion okay so basically ph gives you the uh, whether the sewage is acidic or it is alkalinity in nature. Okay, so um, if you know the pH value is less, if the pH value of the sewage is less, then you can say that the alkalinity of the sewage is also less. That means if the lesser is the pH value, then the lesser will be the alkalinity of the sewage. So Again, you know, the determination of this pH value, it is, uh, yes, it is important of the, uh, the determination of the this pH uh, value of the sewage is important because, you know, uh, you know, this, uh, the certain of kind of your treatment methods, uh, it is uh, dependent, okay, it is dependent upon the availability of the uh, pH value, okay, so, uh, again, we have uh, uh, learned that the pH, uh, it can be like measured with the help of a potentiometer. Though we have uh, done in our lab with, uh, okay, you people have not done. So, uh, uh, previously when we have found out the pH value of water, then we have used the pH paper. But generally, actually, pH paper, it is only for the school students, but uh, for, you know, uh, uh, the upper level uh, we use a uh, instrument known as your potentiometer 
Okay, so the potentiometer, it gives you a very quick and a very accurate uh, result of the pH value that is present in the raw water or in the uh, sewage. Okay, so this is uh, like about your pH value characteristics of sewage. <clears throat> Again, uh, okay, one more uh, thing is that, you know, uh, the fresh if the sewage is fresh, okay, if the sewage is fresh, that means it is generally the sewage is alkaline in nature, okay. So, alkaline in nature means the pH, it is having a pH value of more than 7. So, but uh, that is only for the fresh sewage, okay, but as you keep the sewage for a long time or as time uh, passes, then what happens, this pH, it... Uh, its value, you know, it falls down due to what? Due to the production of some uh, acids, okay? By, you know, like this uh, bacteria will create there. So, what happens is that the pH, it tends to fall down, okay? So, uh, just wait, one student is waiting in the lobby, let me, okay. So, uh, Okay, this is about your pH value. So now we are coming to the chloride uh, contents. So chlorides are generally, you know, these are found in what? These are found in the municipality sewage that uh, is there. So chloride contents you will find in the municipality sewage. And basically, you know, this chloride contents sewage are generally derived from where? From, uh, you can say, from kitchen, okay? So, uh, again, from feces, that is from bathrooms, that feces and urinals, so uh, urinary discharges. So, all these things, they contain your chloride content. So, basically, uh, the chloride, the normal, if you say the normal value of the chloride content that is uh, present in the domestic sewage, it is about, uh, not about, it is 120 milligram per liter. And the permissible, okay, the, what is the permissible value of the chloride content for water supplies? It is 250 milligram per liter. That is for raw water, okay. Chloride content, the permissible chloride content for raw water supplies is 250 milligram per liter. And that is, and for the, on the other hand, for the domestic sewage, the normal chloride content of domestic sewage is 120 milligram per liter. Okay, so this point you have to remember. So it might come in MCQ. Okay. So um, again, the chloride content, you know, uh, this chloride we have one experiment uh, in our lab also. Like you can find the chloride content uh, by uh, try you if you take the sample of uh, wastewater, you can titrate it with uh, a solution of your silver nitrate solution. So, if you uh, titrate the wastewater using a uh, standard silver nitrate solution, then if you have to use potassium chromate uh, as the indicator. So, you can, uh, you know, find out what is the chloride content of the wastewater by this uh, titrating process. Okay. So, this is about your chloride content. So, next we are coming to your nitrogen content. See the, uh, see the characteristics are all the same. But, you know, like somewhat the values are different for both the raw water and the sewage, uh, the sewage water. So, nitrogen content also we have studied in our raw water. So, um, what if, you know, nitrogen content is present in the sewage, so what does that indicate? So, that indicates that in that sewage water, organic matters are present in the sewage. Okay, and the nitrogen, you know, it can be uh, present or it may occur in uh, some of the following four uh, like forms. Like it, it can occur as your uh, free ammonia. Okay, nitrogen may be present as a free ammonia or also it is known as your ammonia nitrogen. Then again, it can be present as your albuminoid nitrogen or it also it is known as your organic nitrogen. And this both, uh, this uh, free ammonia and albuminoid nitrogen, it is together known as your Kaldal nitrogen, okay? Then comes your nitrites and your nitrates. So, uh, this is already been discussed that the free ammonia, uh, that is uh, 
present in the sewage what it does it indicate it indicates the you know the very first stage of the decomposition of this organic matter okay and this albuminoid it will indicate that you know uh, this nitrogen is present in the sewage uh, okay it means before the decomposition before the decomposition of this organic matter it is started before that only the nitrogen it is present in the sewage so that is indicated by your albuminoid nitrogen then comes your uh, this nitrites the nitrites it uh, you know indicates the uh, uh, presence of the decomposed partly decomposed organic matter partly decomposed means that the organic matter which are not fully oxidized okay so that is your partly decomposed organic matter so that is uh, uh, represented by your the presence of nitrites and the nitrates so this nitrates it indicates the presence of your fully orga oxidized organic matter so this four uh, this four follow forms they indicate certain things which are been discussed just now okay now uh, again um, okay so uh, this nitrates okay this uh, nitrites it uh, okay so there is one um, this presence of this nitrates okay this is like somewhat uh, it is very poisoning for the infants if this nitrites are present in the sewage water or the raw water you can say so both in that case there is it is uh, causing some poisons to the infants okay and this happens when the concentration it is about uh, above 45 uh, milligram per liter if the nitrate content it is uh, above 45 milligram per liter then you can say it is uh, there is no uh, uh, disease it is causing in infants okay uh, and uh, the name is your methemoglobinemia okay methemoglobinemia uh, or also it is uh, popularly known as your blue baby disease so it is caused by the presence of your nitrates okay then okay next we are going to discuss about your presence of fats oils and greases so uh, in the sewage water uh, these uh, greases fats and these oils are uh, you know you will find all these things uh, it's very common you can see in the sewage water you know this uh, some oils and these greases and these fats uh, these uh, remain floating in the sewage okay so these are derived in the sewage from uh, you know the discharges of this animals and vegetable matter okay and also you know from uh, you can find it from the kitchen waste also then from the uh, kitchens of these hotels and restaurants also you will find and also from the industries uh, that like garages because there are greases okay so you can find uh, from uh, this uh, kind of you know like uh, things you will find the presence of these fats oils and greases so this actually this uh, if no fats oils and greases are present so what happens is that these matters they actually form a scum like in the while you treat while, while you treat the water actually from screening after screening when it goes to a grid uh, uh, grid basins okay then what happens it goes to a sedimentation basin so this presence of these matters they form a scum on the top of this uh, sedimentation tanks and due to the result of which it it clogs the you know the clogs the pores of the filtering medias okay it uh, clogs the voids of the filtering medias also you can say so generally they what they do they uh they you know they interfere okay they interfere uh in the normal treatment process okay they interfere in the normal treatment methods and therefore these um, you know fats oils and greases they should be removed okay uh, before your treatment process in the treatment process it should be removed so um 
next is your sulfides sulfates and hydrogen sulfide gas so this uh, determination of this sulfides then sulfates also in the seepage okay it is uh, like due to the presence of you know some aerobic and anaerobic decomposition then then the sulfides and the sulfates uh, these are formed due to the you know decomposition of this sulfur containing substances that is present in the seepage and this uh, also this uh, sulfides and sulfates you know these are due to the evolution of a gas known as your hydrogen sulfide gas which i already told you that hydrogen sulfide gas it causes a very uh, offensive smell and other uh, smell and odor to you you uh, also it causes the corrosion of the sewer pipes okay it causes corrosion to the you know uh, concrete sewer pipes so this is uh, you have to remove this hydrogen sulfide gas sul sulfides and sulfates also okay so next is your do this is that is your dissolved oxygen so this uh, dissolved oxygen you know it is you have uh, that it is the determination of this dissolved oxygen it is of very much important because you know why you discharge the uh, sewage into the final destination that is your river or stream you know you should have you you have to be uh, concerned about the fact that there is at least uh, you know the it, the uh, dissolved oxygen content it is not exceeding 4 ppm that is your 4 mg per liter so if suppose uh, it is the you know permissible limit also you can say so if the four, uh, the sewage content it uh, exceeds 4 ppm of your dissolved oxygen content then what will happen is that no it, it will hamper the or it will affect the aquatic life of the river so like the fishes they will get killed then uh, if the fishes get killed then it will you know it will create some nuisance near the disposal so uh, disposal part so all these things you know to ensure that this thing doesn't happen so you have to you know uh, do the do test that is your dissolved oxygen test before you do the sewage disposal process okay then uh this uh, dissolved oxygen it, it is uh, in the fresh sewage it depends upon also depends upon the temperature okay so like if the temperature of, uh, of the sewage it is more than the do content it will be less it is just the opposite okay if the temperature of the sewage is more than the do content will be the less and uh, you know uh, the do content of the sewage it is uh, it can determine by you know there is one method which is known as uh, the winkler's method so the do content you can determine by winkler's method and this is a kind of your oxidation reduction process okay so um, this is about your your dissolved oxygen so next we come to cod that is your chemically oxygen demand okay chemically oxygen demand so here basically you know the oxygen uh, that is you know base basically that is required to oxidize the organic matter that is present in the sewage or in the waste water it can be you know theoretically computed okay so like if the organics the i mean the chemical composition of the uh, this uh, waste water the can be the organ organic matters that are present in the waste water those are known then you can uh, you know the, find out or you can theoretically compute what is the oxygen required to oxidize the organic matter okay so basically if the chemical formulas or the chemical compositions and the concentrations of the uh, you know chemical compounds present in the water or the sewage water those are known to you then you can easily uh, or you can calculate the theoretical oxygen demand uh, of this compounds okay so if the organic compounds and their concentrations or the compositions are known the theoretical oxygen demand of the waste water it can be calculated but basically it is actually not possible to do so 
because you know uh, it is not possible to know the details of the organic compounds that is present in any kind of you know raw water or waste water okay therefore you know we do a test known as your know, the chemical oxygen demand we can uh, it is you know determined it is used for determining the uh, you can say uh, the performance of the raw water okay it is determined by you know performing we do a laboratory test in our uh, college also we have the uh, cod and vod uh, machines we have you can do that so it is performed it is done by performing a test so when you do the cod test you know it is you use a very strong oxidant that is known as your potassium dichromate or also you can use potassium permanganate okay uh, to you know these are these two oxidants are used to stabilize the organic matter uh, and you can find the like the you can find the molecular oxygen used okay and also uh, if you want to perform this test you have to uh, take a quantity of your sample of your wastewater and you have to mix it with the like the quantity of the silver uh, sorry with the standard solution of the potassium dichromate okay you have to take a uh, this uh, quantity of wastewater then you have to mix it with the potassium dichromate and then yeah, when you mix it then you have to just heat the sample the heat both the this uh, potassium common carrier, the potassium dichromate and the wastewater, you have to just heat it after we mix it, okay? Then this organic matter that is uh, present in the wastewater, it will be oxidized by the potassium permanganate, okay? And the resulting solution of the potassium permanganate, it will be titrated. And what, after titrating, what will happen? The oxygen, it will be used in oxidizing the wastewater okay so this is your chemically oxygen or chemical oxygen demand but in easy words if i uh, want to say you what is cod cod actually it is like you no know, uh, what happens is that uh, there are two kinds of organic matters that is present in the sewage that is your one is your bi biologically active and the other one is your biologically inactive uh, organic matters are present in the wastewater okay so basically what cod does is that you know we are we people or everyone we are interested in finding the always finding the active things isn't it so this cod what it does it finds the organic matters of both the biologically active organic matter and also the biologically inactive organic matter but uh we again have one term like BOD. This one uh, we will discuss uh, in the coming class. So that is this BOD. It finds the only the biologically active organic matter. Okay, so that is the difference between your BOD and COD actually. Okay, so now coming to your uh, total car uh, organic carbon that is your TOC. So TOC uh, in short is known as TOC. This is generally used to find out the, you know, the carbon content that is uh, present in the organic matter, okay? So, everybody knows that this carbon, it is the, you know, main constituent of the organic matter. And, you know, the chemical formula of, uh, if you see the every uh, chemical compound of organic matter, it consists of the C, that is your carbon you can see that okay so uh, this uh, total organic compound it is basically used to find out the carbon content of the organic matter okay so okay so next we are coming to your bio, uh, biochemical oxygen demand that is your BOD. You switch. Okay. 
so uh, bod just now i told you that bod and cod are just the face to face uh, thing so here you know like the organic matter it is of two types that is your biologically active one is oxidized by the bacteria that is no major biologically active and the other one the one which cannot be oxidized biologically which is known as your biologically inactive okay so while testing a wastewater like i told you that we are interested only to find the biologically active organic matter okay what is the what are the biologically active organic matters that are present in the water we are interested only to find that okay but the cod test you know it gives you both the uh, like the total total you can say it gives the total of the biologically active as well as you can say the biologically inactive organic matter okay so what if you find the suppose you have find the cod test then also we have to carry out the bod test because we are interested only in finding out the biologically active organic matter so further testing is carried out to determine this bod okay which gives us the biologically active organic matter present in the sewage so um this bod okay you know if uh, sufficient oxygen it is available in the wastewater so the aerobic bacteria those are useful okay which are useful so they will you know actually they will flourish and they will cause the you know aerobic biological decomposition of the waste water okay so if aerobic biological decomposition of waste water will happen then it will continue until the oxidation process it will be completed so while you know the, this uh, this process is going on like the decomposition process is going on and while the oxidation it will be complete the oxidation com oxidation is completed so they in this process the what the amount of oxygen that is you know consumed it is known as your bod so this polluted waters the highly polluted waters it will you know continue to it will uh, it is it will continue to absorb the oxygen for you know like many years or for many months or years okay and you cannot say you cannot find actually you can it is not possible to find the you know ultimate oxygen demand okay what is the uh, ultimate oxygen that is consumed by the organic uh, matter it is not uh, possible to find out okay so there is one uh, you know standard uh, saying that is you have to find the bod okay we can find the bod of water during 5 days at 20 degrees celsius this is the standard demand that we are taking into consideration and this is about 6 uh, like this is about uh, 68% of the total demand and if you take a 10 day bod like if you measure a 10 day bod so it will be like 90% of the total demand okay so basically what is the standard demand it is your 5 day at 20 degree celsius okay so what is the um, formula this is actually the formula you can see here that how to find out the bod of the sewage at five uh, in 5 days at 20 degree celsius so it is your the uh, this do consumed in the test by the diluted sample multiplied by the uh, volume of the diluted sample divided by your volume of the undiluted sample okay so this is the formula so basically the right side of the thing that you are seeing that is the volume of the diluted sample divided by the volume of the undiluted sewage sample basically this part is known as your dilution factor okay so it is your dilution factor so later while we will do some numericals you will get to understand about this uh, uh, expression okay
okay so let us take a uh, so a little bit of break we will we have two classes so you join again at 11:15 okay everyone you join again at 11:15 for the next class okay let us take a little bit of break you can uh, now leave the meeting again i will uh, you join at 11:15 okay